Friday prayers, the highlight of the Muslim week. This is where it happened. The Imam of Tarasa gave instructions on how to beat a woman without leaving any traces. The police recorded the sermons. It's bad. There's no room for this kind of preaching here. Every person deserves respect. If this man doesn't like the laws in Europe, then he should go back to his own country. He can have his own way there. But beating up and abusing women isn't reasonable anywhere, not where he comes from either. A judge summoned the imam in March. Abdeslam Nal Rusi made use of his right to silence. He's from Morocco, like most of the members of the Muslim community of Tarasa. No one admits to hearing the controversial sermon. The imam has since been replaced by someone else. It's in the hands of the courts now. They'll rule on what he said and what he didn't say. I haven't had the opportunity to listen to the recording, so I can't say anything. A guide to beating in the name of the Quran. The controversy has opened a further rift between Muslims and the rest of society. The prosecutor running the case doesn't want to be identified. The problem is the interpretation of these texts nowadays. In this case, the imam said that the advice written down 1,300 years ago should be followed today whenever a woman refuses to obey a man. The police even observed him making gestures to show how a woman should be beaten. The identity of the person who tipped off the police isn't important for the investigators, but there's plenty of speculation in the Muslim community. For example, in this Barcelona mosque. People here believe there's a plot and the imam was betrayed by members of the congregation. There's envy in the congregations as well. Maybe I have a position and behind my back someone wishes me away. There are probably people who think if the imam's gone, then they could take his position. Whoever betrayed the imam is irrelevant to women in the community. The case is a challenge for Spain. The last socialist government passed a number of laws advancing equality in the country laws which earned the appreciation of the United Nations. We have made a lot of progress on women's rights. Spain is a pioneer when it comes to equality in Europe. We cannot permit attitudes which contradict these policies on women's and human rights. The Terrassa case is not unique. Eight years ago, an imam was sentenced after publishing a book which included advice on beating women. And this woman was threatened because she refused to obey the preachers. At the beginning, they put me under psychological pressure. I was isolated within the community. No one would speak to me. I was threatened in person and on the phone. And they threatened my husband. They wanted to scare us. The Quran is cited again and again as justification. Islam experts know the original version in classical Arabic, a language only known to scholars. The problem seems to be the way the texts are being translated. Versions with distorted meanings are printed and handed out. I can't call them translations. In general, there is a danger with imams who live in non-Islamic countries. They are trained in Saudi Arabia, a country ruled by oil, which in my opinion has a false view of Islam. The scandal involving the Imam of Tarasa is damaging for all Muslims in Spain. The danger is that they will all be tarred with the same brush. I think it's a personal case. There's no reason to criminalize the entire Muslim community. Muslim community. 
The imam faces a stiff prison sentence if he's found guilty. The new preachers face a tough task. They have to persuade their community and the rest of Spain that women enjoy equal rights under Islam.